Today's lesson involves adding and subtracting rational expressions with like denominators, which is what you need when you're adding and subtracting fractions. You need a common denominator. So the steps that you're going to take to solve problems involving adding and subtracting rational expressions are you're going to create equivalent rational expressions with like denominators. Now in today's lesson, the denominators are already alike. So let's write that down. They're already alike in today's lesson. The next thing you're going to do is combine like terms in your numerators. You have to remember that when you're subtracting though, you have to distribute the negative into each term in the second expressions numerator. So we're combining like terms in the numerators and it's important that we keep the denominator. Denominator stays the same, right? Adding fractions ain't no thing. You just add the top and the bottom stays the same. Then you're gonna factor if necessary and simplify the expression, which was what we did in the last lesson when we simplified expressions. We factored, eliminated common factors, and simplified. So let's get started on problem number one. We have 3x plus 2 over 4x squared plus x plus 6 over 4x squared. So we already have a common denominator, so all we're going to do is combine like terms in our numerator. So again, if there's no coefficient in front of a variable, you can always put a 1 there. So I'm just going to be combining like terms. So 3x plus 1x is 4x, and then 2 plus 6 is 8. So 4x plus 8 over 4x squared. But we need to simplify this. I can factor out a GCF in the numerator. What can I factor out? I can divide out a 4. What am I left with? x plus 2 over 4x squared. And I can simplify it further. I have the same number on top as I do on bottom. This 4 out here and this 4 on bottom, they have a common factor, which is 4. So I can eliminate those and I'm left with x plus 2 over x squared. And that's my answer. Let's move on to number two. Number two, we still have a common denominator. And I'm going to switch colors up here just because I want to. So let's switch it up. Let's do this color. Whoa, it jumped down to the bottom. So number two, 2x squared plus 5x over x squared plus 4x plus 3 plus x squared minus 12 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. So I have a common denominator. When I have a common denominator, I just can combine like terms in my numerator. So 2x squared is a like term with 1x squared. I'm going to combine those to get 3x squared. 5x, I'm not combining that with anything, but it doesn't go away. It stays. And then the negative 12 stays as well over x squared plus 4x plus 3. And now we're back to where we were in the previous lesson where we just need to simplify it. So pause the video and factor your numerator and your denominator. So you're just factoring your quadratic trinomials. So go ahead and do that now. So hopefully you already factored your numerator and your denominator and you got x plus 3 times 3x minus 4 over x plus 3 times x plus 1. And now you can eliminate your common factors that are in both your numerator and your denominator. And that's x plus 3. And what are you left with? 3x minus 4 over x plus 1. And that is your answer. So let's move on to number 3. Number 3 is an problem, a problem that involves subtraction. So we have our common denominators, but we're subtracting the second fraction, okay, the second rational expression. What you have to do when you're subtracting is distribute that negative into every term on the inside of the second set of parentheses, okay, or the second numerator. So what happens? Let me change colors here. What happens is that each term, right, gets multiplied by negative 1. So instead of 2x squared, this becomes negative x squared. Instead of positive 2x, this becomes minus 2x or negative 2x. Instead of positive 12, this becomes negative 12. So now we can combine like terms with that uh, sign in front of each number. So I'm going to combine 4x squared and negative 2x squared, which is 2x squared. 
and then I can combine negative 1x with negative 2x and I get negative 3x. Okay, so you see what we're doing there? Because I distributed that negative, it, it impacts every single term in the second set of parentheses. And now I have negative 8 and I'm, I'm going to combine that with negative 12 to get negative 20. So a lot of students, they're really good with distributing that negative into this first term, like negative 2x squared, but oftentimes they forget to do that to every single term in the second fraction. So make sure that you distribute it into every term. And now we're back to where we were in yesterday's lesson. So we're going to factor our numerator, and obviously our denominator is just a basic binomial. It can't be factored anymore. So go ahead and pause the video and factor your numerator, your quadratic trinomial where a is not 1. So if you factored it, you should have gotten x minus 4 times 2x plus 5. You can always check your work by foiling it, right? x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Negative 4x or negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Combine those to get negative 3x. You can always check your work over x minus 4 and we're back to where we were in the previous lesson. I can simplify this common factor in my numerator and denominator. 2x plus 5 over 1 is just 2x plus 5. Let's move on to number 4. Number 4 is the same type of problem where we're subtracting these rationals. So I need to distribute that negative into every term in the second set of parentheses. So what happens here? And I'm going to change colors again. What happens here? This becomes negative x squared, this becomes positive 2x, and this becomes negative 5. If you want to rewrite that, you can. I typically don't like to rewrite the entire problem. And the more you do this, the better you'll get it just like you know that it's going to change the sign whenever you're subtracting, or the sign will be changed whenever you're subtracting. So now let's combine like terms. So we've got 4x squared minus x squared to get 3x squared, negative x, and if you want, you can put a 1 there, negative x plus 2x makes positive x, positive 3 and negative 5 make negative 2 over denominator stays the same, 9x squared minus 4. And now we're going to factor. We've got a quadratic trinomial where a is not 1 in our numerator. When we factor this, we get 3x minus 2 times x plus 1 over, and that denominator is a difference of perfect squares. So what do you get? You get 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2, and now we can eliminate common factors in our numerator and our denominator. Do we have one? We do. Not that, it can, not that every single problem can be simplified at the end. Sometimes answers can't be simplified, and that's okay. But in this, in this case, we're just practicing more. So they can be simplified, and what are you left with? x plus 1 over 3x plus 2. And that's your answer. Let's move on to number five, rocking and rolling. So number, number five involves three rational expressions. We've got 3x minus 1 over x minus 2 plus 3x over x minus 2 minus 2x minus 6 over x minus 2. So we definitely have a common denominator between all of these fractions or all of these rationals. So we're good there. And now we can just combine like terms in our numerators. The addition. It, Students are really good with addition. It's the subtraction part where students really struggle. Just you have to make sure that you distribute that negative into every term on the inside of the second set of parentheses. So what does that become? That becomes negative 2x and positive 6. Now let's combine like terms. We've got 3x plus 3x to make 6x minus 2x to make 4x. Now let's combine our constants. Negative 1 can be combined with positive 6 to make positive 5. Over, denominator stays the same. Over x minus 2. And that cannot be simplified any more than this, so that's your answer. Let's move on to our last problem, problem number 6, where we have like denominators between every single one of these fractions. 
and we're subtracting this second rational expression. So we need to make sure that we distribute that negative into every term on the inside of the second set of parentheses. So we're going to get a negative 2x squared and a negative 9 when we're combining like terms. And now let's just combine like terms in our numerators. We've got 3x squared minus 2x squared to get x squared plus x squared to get 2x squared. Now let's combine our x terms. Negative 2x can be combined with positive 3x to make positive x. And now let's combine our constants. We've got a negative 9 here, and we can combine that with negative 6 to get negative 15. Over, denominator stays the same, x plus 3 squared. So now let's factor the numerator. The numerator can be factored if you want to pause the video and go ahead and factor this quadratic trinomial where a is not 1. You should get x plus 3 times 2x minus 5 over, and I'm going to write this out, x plus 3 times x plus 3, because that's what x plus 3 squared is. Some students want to write, oh, that's x squared plus 9. Nope, that's x plus 3 times x plus 3. And now we can simplify this. We have x plus 3 in our numerator and our denominator, and that simplifies to 2x minus 5 over x plus 3. So where do students struggle with this particular lesson, with this particular concept? A lot of students struggle with factoring, right? If you're not good at factoring, you're going to struggle. It's going to take you a long time to work these problems. So if you need help with factoring, there are other lessons out there to help you, re help you review factoring, GCF, difference of squares, quadratic trinomials, factoring by grouping, but there's no grouping in today's lesson. So um, that concludes your notes over adding and subtracting rational expressions with like denominators. I hope it was helpful.